Everyone has struggled with trim and buoyancy at some point in their scuba diving career. One of my patrons asked for buoyancy tips while maintaining a calm breathing pattern. So let's cover the basics, plus a short breathing exercise to help you maintain your position in the water. First, let's talk about what affects buoyancy. Each person's physiology will determine how much you naturally sink or float. Then there's the scuba equipment. Your exposure suit is a big variable here, but other factors include your BCD, especially heavy backplate and wing setups, steel versus aluminum tanks, and fins. We combat our floatiness with lead weight, either on a weight belt or in integrated pockets in the BCD. You'll have to take in all the previous factors plus your environment to determine how much weight you need for the dive. Less weight is required for fresh water than the ocean, and some seas are actually saltier than others, so you may need more weight in certain parts of the world. All right, let's get into the top tips for improving your buoyancy and trim. Trust your equipment and full Fully exhale. Without realizing it, beginners will keep air in their lungs using a shallow breathing pattern because there's still anxiety about being underwater. A great example of this is when you struggle to descend, but then all of a sudden remember to fully exhale and voila, you start going down. Of course, this can only happen if you're wearing the proper amount of weights. For the most part, divers are overweighted. If you notice that you have the body position of a seahorse, that means fins down below the rest of your body, then that's a telltale sign that you're overweighted. Another indicator is the amount of air that you need to become neutrally buoyant while doing a recreational dive. If you get neutrally buoyant, but your position changes drastically with your normal breathing, then that means that you have too much air in your BCD, which is compensating for wearing too much weight. To find the right amount of weight that you need for a dive, do a weight check before and after the dive. This is particularly important if you're diving with aluminum tanks. Aluminum tanks become positively buoyant as they empty, so you need to make sure that you have enough weight to do your three minute safety stop at five meters. Get the right equipment for your body. Scuba diving trim is all about fine tuning things. If possible, I recommend talking to other divers who are diving in the same conditions as you and trying out equipment before making a purchase. That way you can really figure out what you need and spend your money in the right way. For example, you can test out different styles of BCDs. Or another factor for a lot of people is the difference between positive, neutral, and negatively buoyant fins. Getting the right fins will really help you with getting that desired final position in the water. Okay, we're really lucky today because iTours here to help us with determining positive, neutral, and wow. negatively buoyant fins. Itor. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what do you think? Give me some time. Some Give me some time. Okay, okay. Next test. Do the shake test. Shake test. Oh, ho, ho. That looks good. I don't know, we have an air pocket. Air pocket, down it goes, down it goes. Oh no, oh no! Okay, see the last one. Bye! What? <laughs> I got you. So what are we working with? We have negative, this is the jet fin. What is this one? Apex. Apex. RK3. RK3, neutral. And this is the floatiest fin you'll ever have, Scuba Pro Sea Wing. And just as a side note, I personally do not recommend using ankle weights for the whole floaty feet syndrome. Distribute weights for better underwater position. There are several places to store weight on your BCD, which will help with your trim adjustments. But of course, only focus on this once you've found your ideal weight. Now let's get into breathing. While scuba diving, you want to breathe normally, only using large inhales and exhales to change your position in the water. I use belly breathing, which relaxes the torso and and allows for slow, efficient breathing. My normal breath is about half of my lung capacity, and I really focus on using nice long exhalations while I scuba dive. Extending the exhale triggers the parasympathetic nervous system, which has a calming effect and will ultimately help with air consumption. Let's try this scuba breath together. Relax the belly, nice and soft. We're gonna breathe through the mouth because we're scuba divers, so we're awkward mouth breathers. We're gonna inhale for three and exhale for five. And of course the timing can change depending on what's most comfortable for you, but you want it to feel like a normal breath 
with a longer exhale. So exhale fully, inhale. Exhale. And that should already feel relaxing. Like I, I already feel better. <laughs> so play with that. You can just sit and breathe using whatever numbers, but always making the exhale just a little bit longer. Any kind of relaxation is going to help you with your air consumption. And again, we're using our normal lung capacity for the majority of the dive. We increase the volume whenever we want to change positions in the water. Finally, we got to work those muscles and not not these ones but you know what i mean there is some strength training required for really nice trim in the water i teach divers to have a horizontal position legs lifted and then doing the frog kick okay just like that bam bam obviously this position is not available to all divers and has to be adjusted based on physical abilities and or injuries i prefer this position because it teaches really good habits of keeping your feet up and away from the reef but it does require some low back and glute work the standard diving position with your legs straight out behind you and doing a flutter kick is totally fine but you just have to be more aware of how close you are to the reef Whatever position you take, you don't want to be kicking the reef. One, to keep it healthy, and two, to not ruin the dive for the people around you. I'm sure all of us have been behind that diver who's just mixing up the bottom and creating terrible visibility for everybody. Not so fun. I absolutely love teaching about buoyancy and trim because this is the stuff that makes you feel like an astronaut. Feeling neutrally buoyant and becoming a part of the underwater world, it's like the best. This is what makes us addicted to this stuff. I mean, besides all the awesome creatures and everything we get to experience, but that feeling, that weightlessness is uh, just so good. So now I really want to hear from you in the comments. What tip really made your buoyancy and your trim just click? Let me know. And if you're not already, subscribe for more scuba diving content and you can check out Patreon for extras from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!